everyone, this is Edwin Epperson with Blue Bay Capital. And today we are here to help you spot fake lenders. And this is going to help you real estate investors make wiser and more informed decisions. So what are we going to be talking about today? Well, we're going to be talking about real estate lenders, a sort of what their concept is, how, you know, why is it that they're in the real estate lending space? And this will converse over to uh, terms and how to spot fake lenders. Okay, then we're going to go over the terms of most typical uh, lenders that are in the real estate space. We're going to talk about standard fees. And then last, we're going to talk about uh, caution flags and how to verify uh, real estate lenders, real legitimate lenders. Okay. Now, real estate lenders, we always demand collateral. Uh, if uh, somebody is holding themselves out to be a lender to you as a real estate investor, uh, then know that they require collateral. Now, if they are offering business credit, which you see a lot of advertisements for, uh, that they offer business lines of credit or business loans, uh, no collateral, things like that, that's th those are, can be potentially legitimate uh, lenders. However, they will be based on the income of your business. So if you as a real estate investor have no proven business income, uh, you will not be able to work with a legitimate business uh, line of credit or a business loan provider. If you're talking with somebody who offers quote unquote business lines of credit and you have no provable income and they say, oh, that's no worries, uh, more than likely your, your fraud beacons should immediately be alerted and be looking for where they say something along the lines of, well, if you pay this application fee or if you pay this type of uh, fee to get started, then we'll get you set up more than likely, especially if you have no performing business income uh, or history of a business performance and they're holding themselves out to loan to your business without any collateral, that should be a huge yellow flag, if not a red flag. Okay. Another thing that real estate investors, we always require skin in the game. That's a down payment. Now, if you're big into creative financing and structuring your capital stack to where you're leveraging debt, but then you're also leveraging someone else's capital for the gap uh, for that down payment and other costs, that's fine. Just be aware that if you're doing this with a family friend or just a, a friend that that individual knows that either they're investing into your loan or into your project as an unsecured investor, or if they are requiring their uh, equity or their uh, gap payment to be secured to the property, you need to make sure you check with your first position lender if they are okay with joint ventures or seconds, okay? Now we're gonna talk about some risk, okay? So risk is, now I know the, 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 uh, this image is a little bit unique and let me explain this. So think of the risk as being weighty, very heavy and dense. The more dense, the more risky a subject is then the bigger the rate. So that's why we have the rate as the big ball. And the risk is that red, heavy, dense ball. So the greater the risk means the heavier that that risk is, the higher the rate. So that's how you can uh, see that and how it relates to that imagery. So common risk. Uh, something that lenders will look at is the ability to repay. We may get a credit report. Now, you'll see a lot of national lenders uh, require a credit report. There is another issue that that might be done, and, and I'll explain to that, uh, point that out later. But just know that a uh, credit report being pulled is uh, a way for the lender to look at, okay, what is your payment history? Do you pay your bills on time? Things like that. So that is a way for us to negate common risk. Another way that we can negate common risk is requiring more money in. So the down payment, the skin in the game, right? So the more the down payment, the lower our loan to the value of the property, therefore the safer we are. So that's less risk. That could equate to a lower interest rate, all right? Another way is experience. Uh, you will see this probably more with your local private lender instead of your big, large, national, hard money lender slash private lender. Um, the experience factor goes into how much experience do you personally have in the real estate investing space? And then how much experience do you have with that specific private lender? Uh, we at Blue Bay Capital, I look at both. Uh, if you're a brand new borrower of my capital, but you've got lots of experience, then that's something where we can work out uh, an agreement on the rates and terms. If you have no experience, and this was the first time that 
uh, you're borrowing from us, well, that's going to equate to a higher risk, therefore a higher rate. Um, also, what does the market look like? Now, this is something that, of course, real estate investors tell us, oh, well, they have a tendency to always look at the markets going to be going up. Now, we are, I'm doing this video in 2022. The market is in a lot of turmoil right now, and not only the real estate market is starting to have some shifts in days on market and uh, availability of uh, product, but there's also the economic, uh, economic uh, factors uh, and socio-political, socio-geological issues that really create a very unique market that we as a lender have to take in consideration. Uh, and, and does that increase our risk to the loans or does that decrease our risk to the loans? I would say two years ago, uh, the risks were very, very low as far as market factors. Today, the risks are much higher. So that's going to uh, affect not only the rate, but it could also affect your down payment and other risk factors. Um, so another thing is an internal factor for the real estate investor. So an internal, or excuse me, internal factor to the lender. So what do those uh, look like? So available capital, how much capital do I have to loan out? How many bad loans do I have on my books? If I'm a portfolio lender, meaning when I make the loan, I'm, I'm keeping that loan all the way until it's paid off. How many of my loans on the books are bad loans? Changes to underwriting. Uh, you know, if I start seeing the market shift or more importantly, if I'm packaging loans up to then sell on the secondary market, my underwriting has to mimic the secondary market underwriting. Uh, and then, of course, exposure to certain borrower types, such as experienced borrowers versus new borrowers. How many loans do I have out to new borrowers versus experienced borrowers? All of these internal factors, which you as a real estate investor would never know, these are factors that we have to factor into, okay, what is the risk to our entire portfolio? And then how does that work out with each specific loan? So here's a, another thing is national versus local. And, and this is really going to play into when you start getting to the caution flags that we're looking at. So we've got two primary types of lenders. We've got national lenders and local lenders. And I'm going to group national lenders into any multi-state lender. Okay. So multi-state lender versus one state and even uh, you could even get specific like they only lend in their backyard uh, such as they're from and I'm I'm from Florida so I'm right here in Tampa if I only lo loan to real estate investors in the city of Tampa that would be a very hyper focused local lender but we're going to keep it to statewide versus multi state even national so what are the differences well, if somebody's holding them out to be a national lender the likelihood that they will require a license uh, is very high. And the reason I say that is because of out of the uh, 50 states that we have, um, there are 40, I believe, 40 or 42 that do not require a license. You don't need a license to originate or broker loans in those states, but eight do. Uh, if your lender is saying we lend all over the United States in every state, they are required to have license. And actually, they're required to have multiple license because some of those states that do require license do not recognize the license of other states. So just be aware that if they're a national lender, they're holding themselves out to be a national lender, more than likely they are going to have an NMLS number, okay? Also, they should be very professional. They should have a professional website. They should be listed on almost all of the uh, real estate lending websites, uh, they should be going to conferences, they should have their own, lo they should have local numbers, toll free numbers, you should be able to get in touch with a person from that company, be able to do research on their website, and they should all have professional emails. So not, you know, Edwin Epperson at Gmail, it should be Edwin Epperson at Blue Bay Capital or, or whatever their name is at their company's name or their company website. Are they recognizable? This is really key. If they're holding themselves out to loan all over the United States, this should be a recognizable name. Like There are a few recognizable ones I can list right now. Vizio, RCN, uh, I, my goodness, uh, Patch of Land, uh, flip, flip That Fund, Flip to Fund, uh, Fund That Flip, excuse me. Uh, so there's a whole list of them that are recognizable. If somebody is holding themselves out to be a national lender and the company, you have no idea who the company is. You've never heard of them before. You've never seen them in any publication. They're not on any of your uh, list websites for uh, lenders. That should give you some caution. All right, so a private lender or a local lender, what does a true local lender look like? Well, 
I am not talking about, again, private money. Private money will be an individual that is not a professional lender. Uh, when you reach out and you see somebody who advertise themselves as a private lender, but they're in the business of making loans, they should be a company. Uh, so if you're finding somebody on social media that holds themselves out to be, I'm a private lender, but, and they're actually a private individual, that should raise some actual caution flags. We can go into that later, but it would be a company that you're reaching out to or that is reaching out to you. Also, uh, the company should be registered in the state. Matter of fact, you can go to the Florida Corporations Division here in the state of Florida, go online, uh, sunbiz.org. You can go to search an entity, uh, go to search by name and then type in Blue Bay Capital LLC. You will see our registration uh, and it should be up to date. And whatever company you're looking for should be up to date for that year. Also, local phone number where you can contact or call, uh, that's really important. Uh, be aware of WhatsApp numbers, Facebook numbers, but they don't actually have a local number. Uh, that should be a yellow flag. Uh, also, if you can't find a local number and all they have are an 888 number, just be aware that that might be a yellow flag, not, not necessarily indicative of a fraud or scam, but it should raise some concern that you can't reach out to them locally. If they have a local number, the likelihood that they have a local place of business or they're there locally uh, should be pretty high. All right, so let's look at some terms. High rates for high or low rates for high risk. So here is some examples. I've got three right here. I'm sure you're going to laugh because you're going to see these. Uh, if you have ever seen come across these, these immediately should be calls for concern. Um, here's another one. Low interest rate of 4%. Uh, here's another one. Non-collateral funding recourse. Uh at a rate of 5%. Uh, so it's just you you have these uh, individuals and uh, Mr. Alvin Brigham doesn't even have a photo. It's a picture of a bunch of roses. Uh, it is it is indicative of the terms don't match the risk. And we've already gone over what in, increases risk for a lender. Right here, you have people offering uncollateralized or unsecured loans at a very low interest rate. The risk of an unsecured loan is very high. Therefore, the interest rate would be very high. But here you have it going opposite. Those are fundamentals of lending. So if you have somebody that's offering very high risk money at a very low rate, e immediately, immediately start to have your fraud and scam antennas raise. So anything that you see a red flag in this presentation, those are that should be indicative just to walk away. Don't even engage in conversation. Yellow flags, not so much. If you see a yellow flag, it's something that I'm letting you know you should probably do a little bit more research. Does not mean that the company or the individual is a fraud. It just means that you need to approach it with a little bit more caution. So to speak of that, here's some caution of flags to look for. Uh, too many products. You can see right here, they go off and they list uh, legitimate funding for fix and flip, buy and hold, equity loans, real estate loans, and business funding. Now, first couple, fix and flip funding, buy and hold, uh, yeah, that's that's reasonable. I mean, that's a pretty typical range of products. However, they start getting into some very high risk uh, lending equity loans. Um, equity is typically not a loan. Equity is an actual equitable position uh, in an asset or in a business venture. Real estate loans, of course, that's very broad in general. And then business funding, uh, again, very low. 100% financing does not exist. If you see 100% financing, just run for the hills. Don't don't even waste your time. And then some of these people will actually give out a list of loans that they're, they offer. So in this list, you will see uh, these are pretty common and typical, but there's three right here, which is what I call consumer loans. These are protected or they are very highly regulated by the federal government and the state governments. These are conventional loans, FHA loans, VA loans. Why are these considered consumer loans? Because those loans are securing primary residences. If you are offering a loan or if the lender is offering loans that secure primary residences, it's considered a consumer loan. They must have a license, plain and simple. Um, again, if they're holding themselves out to be a lender. Now, if you meet a private lender or a private money guy at a local real estate and you say, hey, listen, I'm looking to buy a personal property for me and my family. And they say, OK, this is what I'll do for you. That's different. I'm talking about people that reach out, that post on social media, that advertise for these type of loan products. They are required to have licensing. So huge red flag. 
So let's talk about fees because this is talked about many, many times in the real estate, on the social media, real estate lending world. What's a, an appropriate fee? What's not an appropriate fee? So outside closing fees, these are fees that you may have to pay before you actually close. And I, I, I see this all the time. Hey, if anybody asks for any money outside of closing, they're a scam. Uh, I can see why that would be the case, but not every fee is an out, outside of closing is a scam. And, and let me explain. Appraisal fee. I'm sorry. Uh, as a lender, I will not pay for your appraisal on a property that you're going to buy or that you own for your benefit. I'm not going to spend my money to help you uh, benefit from that. And then if you decide not to use me for funding, I'm $600 out, $700, whatever, how big the property is, things like that. So an appraisal or full property valuation report, that will be required by the lender. And you will have to pay that outside of closing. Here's another one, credit reports. Now, depending on the size of the lender, what they require, some uh, lenders may require you to pay for the credit report and other lenders will wrap that into the closing, assuming that they uh, close. And that could be because, especially in your large national lenders, uh, they do a lot of loans. Therefore, uh, you know, if they have a few credit reports that come back that aren't satisfactory and they don't move forward in the loan, that's okay. Uh, it's just a, it's, it's a caution flag. So if they require you to uh, pay for your credit report, do a little bit of due diligence, make sure that they're a legitimate lender, that they're an actual lender in the business of offering loans. And then of course, if they are, then proceed forward. You can also ask, how is a credit report stored? Uh, how will it be given? Will you be given a copy? Things like that. Here's the big thing that I always hear, uh, underwriting or a loan processing fee. All right. So that may or may not be indicative of a scan scam. Uh, just know that uh, depending on the size of the of the lender, uh, could be uh, a key on whether they're going to charge you for the underwriting or processing fee before you close. Uh, at at a minimum, they will disclose to you if that what that cost is and what it does. It will not be a ridiculous cost. Uh, most underwriting fees are between 999 to 1450 loan processing fee, a few hundred dollars. I've seen them, you know, up to a thousand, uh, just know that if they're, if it's equivalent to points on the loan, uh, then, or if they're saying you need to buy points, then that would be something that would be of concern. All right. So what are non-standard or scammy fees? A loan application fee, that's definitely a red flag. If you hear anybody saying they're going to charge you to put an application, run for the hills. The only <laughs> the only thing time that I have seen this done actually is with the big bank. Sometimes there will be a loan application fee from a big bank, but they're a brick and mortar place. You should be able to walk in and meet the banker. Uh, so that would be the only exception to the rule, but I'm not sure how common that is. The other fee is loan insurance. If anybody is saying, hey, you have to pay for loan insurance, you have to pay a certain amount of money to ensure that we give you this loan, run for the hills. That is a scam. Don't fall for it. Uh, again, and I put underwriting and loan processing fee in here as well. You have to do your due diligence. If the lender is saying that this is what you have to pay before they'll proceed forward with the loan, make sure that it makes sense. It's not a ridiculous. And, and honestly, at the point that they require you or ask you to pay that, they should have at least been able to say, based on the information that we've collected, and they should have collected a lot of information at this point, based on this information, we're willing to do the loan. I believe, at least for Blue Bay Capital, the only time that at that point that we require the processing fee to be paid, the only time that it would fall out of closing is if the uh, the appraisal comes back and it's significantly lower than the value that you know we came to agree that this is what we believe the ARV is going to be. If the value comes back significantly lower, does not mean you're going to fall out of closing. It could simply mean you have to bring more money to the table. So just know that that's a yellow flag because it could be indicative of a scam, but not always. All right, so here's some more cautionary flags and I'm gonna give you some examples. If they use Gmail or some other type of open or free source email account, you can see right here, there's that famous Alvin Brigham, uh, 44. So, but it's a Gmail account and he holds himself out to do loans all over the United States and internationally. Yellow flag. 
Use words not commonly used in the American vernacular. All right, so like cheers or kindly. Now, I've got a very good friend, uh, David. He's over in England. Great guy. Uh, absolutely a, a, a solid stand-up real estate investor. And, and he may put his country code if you're going to reach out to him. So, of course, he's going to you know, do that. Or if he has a number in the United States and he's giving that to somebody, that may just be commonplace because he does business in both England and America. But generally speaking, unless you personally know the individual and they're reaching out to you or they're advertising uh, and they have words that such as cheers or kindly, uh, things that are not common in the American vernacular, it's a yellow flag. It's not a red flag. It's simply a yellow flag. Do a little bit more research. Grammatical spelling or errors. Uh, this is, of course, uh, <laughs> of course, this is common and, and most people understand and get this. Uh, just be aware that sometimes spelling errors aren't indicative of somebody that doesn't know how to speak or type English. I make errors all the time when I'm either posting on social media or sending an email. It's because I get uh, my 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 typing works faster than my brain, and and I'm not a I'm not catching the words as I type, and then I'll send it out because I'm in a rush. So just because spelling uh, errors might occur doesn't mean it's a scam, but definitely grammatical errors. Uh, that's something that you should be aware of. Uh, again, yellow flag. Another yellow flag uses country codes in front of the phone numbers. We mentioned this previously. You know, if they're always using a plus one or whatever, it's not again uh, a scam, but it's a yellow flag. Again, Gmail free email accounts. I can't say how how much that is. That should be a dead giveaway. I uh, should probably change a slide to make that a red flag. All right, here's another one, uh, vague language or a language that's not familiar with real estate investing. So here you can see they're advertising all types of legitimate loans, business loans, but they don't really get into it. Uh, need fundings, that's a grammatical error. That's uh, it, not how you would say that. Uh, here's some more very broad, generic. Uh, they're not diving into specifics of real estate investing. And I would encourage you guys, you know, have fun with this. Reach out, you know, respond, uh, it, especially if <laughs> don't don't reach out and respond with the intent of getting money. But ask them real estate specific terminology and see how they respond. Here's another dead giveaway. Uh, the name of the profile versus the name of the email account. There's no reason that, especially if it's a personal, like a free email account, that's just a dead giveaway. Uh, you're probably dealing with a scammer. All right, so how we've given you all these yellow flags. How can you actually go and check and confirm that who you're dealing with is an actual lender, whether a private or national lender? Well, here's one thing. Again, remember, national lenders, especially if they're advertising that they can do uh, consumer loans. Remember those three consumer loans? Check right here. Here's a website, nmlsconsumeraccess.org. You can go online and you can type in their uh, number to check to see if they're legitimate. They've actually registered. If not, run for the hills. Here's another one, private lender. Look up in your state corporate division. This is so easy to do. Again, you can do that for Blue Bay Capital. Go to Florida Corporation Divisions. Actually, the website is sunbiz.org. Uh, that's S-U-N-B-I-Z dot org. You can go on there, uh, search for an entity, search by the name, and then type in Blue Bay Capital LLC. You will see my company right there. You could do that with any quote unquote private lender in whatever state you're in. All right, click on the profile. Uh, social media, if they're on social media profile, click on the profile, see how active they are. If they were just created a year ago and you know it's a 40-year-old person that supposedly has been in private lending for years, that should be huge concern. Um, you know, are they actively engaged? Does the name match the photo? These are all typical things that we inherently do. We look at the profile. Uh, you know, uh, it's a, a white businessman that's got a suit on, and the name is uh, I, I don't know something like you Juan Win or something like that. Um, it's not the fact that we're being <laughs> racial. We're not racially profiling, but does the name match the photo? Uh, does the name, you know, is it a female or a male name and the photo is the opposite sex? So these are all just common sense things that you can do to protect yourself and protect others. 
All right, so let's check. Uh, here's another great way, and I'm a huge fan of this. Go and check some of the industry-leading aggregate websites that have a list for lenders. And you're gonna know some of these right off the bat. So there's the American Association of Private Lenders, there's Private Lender Link, uh, Bigger Pockets, as well as Connected Investors. So those are some of the four biggest aggregate sites where you can go and you can actually find lenders on the site. Uh, we are on bigger pockets. Um, sometimes we're on American Association of Private Lenders. It just depends on how much more business I'm looking for. Uh, but to be honest, we get a lot of business through Facebook and bigger pockets in personal connections and referrals. So uh, we, you will find us on bigger pockets sometimes on American Association of Private Lenders. At a minimum, if they're on that website, they've had to pay. They have to pay to be listed on those on those websites. So that's number one. Somebody's willing to put the money behind. Uh, their profile, if you will. And then, of course, you can reach out and contact them. They should have contact phone numbers, emails, and even their website that you can do your due diligence. And that is how to spot a fake lender. This has been Edwin Epperson with Blue Bay Capital. We are in, I am committed to helping real estate investors make wiser and more informed decisions. And this is just one of those ways to do that. I'm happy to have a conversation with anyone. If you'd like, you can go to our website, fill out a contact form, schedule a phone call with me. Happy to jump on a call and speak with you. If you are a capital investor and you're looking for ways to diversify your investment and you're, you're hesitant to work with people because you don't know who is a legitimate, who's real, I'm happy to have a discussion of how my capital investors has have partnered with Blue Bay Capital to make the loans to our real estate investors here in the state of Florida. This has been Edwin Epperson with Blue Bay Capital. God bless. Make it a great rest of your week.